Welcome back. Shabbat Shalom. We are on part four of this week's Shabbat services. We had taken a break after doing the Torah and the half Torah, and we're going to be touching on the Brit Kadashah, um, which is the new covenant or also known as the New Testament. Um, and before we do that, I'm going to go over announcements and we're happy to have you here and and with us on shabbat service um and listening to shabbat shabbat service and this is um august 29th 2020 a low 9 57 80 on the hebrew calendar um and this is ki tetzai when you go or more like when you go out <laughs> is that parashat and we have read the torah and we have read the half torah portions and recapped on them um and we are going to be doing the brick kadasha in this section and we are going to be touching on matthew chapter 5 verses 27 to 30 and first corinthians chapter 5 verses 1 to 5 um, and touching on that. Um, so my little pitch here for freeconferencecall.com, uh, please check your access. This is something that we are using more and more of, and we're doing live events during, during the week. So keep your eyes posted to wait to Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center USA. We post it under announcements. Um, there is, as I mentioned on uh, at the beginning of, of Shabbat, I had mentioned um, there are different ways to access that. Um, you can access by phone. Uh, if you're in the United States, there's one phone number for all of the United States and one access code. Um, that is 978-990-5385. And then it will tell you to enter the access code and you will enter 3968037 pound, which looks like the number sign. Again, it's 978-990-5385 and the access code is 3968037 pound. Um, other countries are under the internet. There's a, there's a link to the international dial-in numbers. I also have already posted them to the group um there are about 76 different countries that have free access to um to the dial in um, once you dial your number you also need to use the same access code it's the same for all countries and that access code is 3968037 pound the other way to come in um, there is a web, um, there's a web access to join the online meeting, and that's HTTPS colon backslash backslash join dot free conference call dot com backslash EPVCCI1. And our online meeting ID is EPVCCI1. I haven't ever seen anybody need to use that. Um, usually what happens is if you um, click on to the green radio button that says join the online meeting or join, um, it, it'll be um, on that page when you click on to the address and you click onto that and what'll drop down will be, there'll be a drop down window that comes and it'll, it'll say enter your name and enter your email address and then there'll be another radio button to join and that should bring you right into the room um and when, once you get into the room um there is audio option there's a microphone in there you can mute that you can unmute that um so you can talk directly through the web page um of course you know when you're on the phone you can talk as well this is live in real time we have had gatherings um, where everybody's able to talk together just as you would in person, um, uh, you know, unfortunately the, the, the gathering is not happening. So this is a way that we can gather as a congregation to be able to worship together, to do, to do corporate prayer together, to have little prayer groups as well, teaching groups. Um, there's a lot we can do with this. 
um, as I mentioned um, on the first part. So that's my little pitch for freeconferencecall.com. Uh, please check your access because this is this is growing, and the people that are coming are are really starting to enjoy coming and gathering. Um, it's something you know we are social beings, so this is you know we we usually come in and we socialize for about a half hour, then we get down to business, whatever we're um, there for. Like we were doing prayer for the nations for the last two weeks. And um, so, you know, we, we've kind of gathered in and gave people enough time to, to get in. And then we, you know, whoever was there, we were socializing. And then we got down to business, did prayer, had some teaching, had some discussion, prayer. And then, you know, we closed in prayer and uh, the Aaronic blessing, which we will do today as well. Um, and then kind of hung out and had a little bit of a, a socialization again uh, before we called it a night so we're going to do more and more of this kind of stuff and you know gather together and as um you know we start gathering you know people might want specific specific um teachings or specific discussions or you know we can do small kind of small groups those kinds of things but bear in mind we can actually have a thousand people gathered at one time so that's really powerful. So please check your access. This is this can be a very powerful gathering uh, together as a congregation. And that's all I'm going to say about that. And again, as I mentioned earlier in the week ahead, there's Bible study. There's Pastor Noel has Tuesday tidbits. He also does um, Sabbath service as well. So there's things that do come up during the week. Um, and of course, our our group on Facebook is a very active group, Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center USA. We're a very uh, busy group, um, which is wonderful. Very nice people. We, we are very blessed by God to have gathered such wonderful people on our group, and we're very happy to have you. I'm very happy to have you participating in these things as well and the live events that are, are yet to come. So. Um, we thank you for that. We thank the Lord for that. And we thank the Lord for you. So um, that's what I'm going to say about that. So I'm going to open this, this section with an opening prayer as well. Alvino Mokino, our Father, our King, we thank you in the mighty name of Yeshua, Yeshua HaMashiach, for all you have done for all you have given us. We are so blessed this Shabbat to have your presence here with us. That, that sense of shalom is all over us as, as we know you're here in our midst, as we worship you, as we praise you, as we honor you and glorify your name. You are our father. You are our creator. You are our maker. And we love you. And we're so, so blessed to be in your presence in the mighty name of Yeshua. Jesus, we also ask your Holy Spirit to guide us in this section of the Rit Kadashah. Give us our hearts to be open to whatever it is that you want us to, to grasp and to know um, all of what you want for us in this week's lesson. And we thank you in the name of Yeshua, Jesus, amen and amen. And once again, the ancient call of worship was the blowing of the shofar. <laughs> Because of copyright, I cannot play any music. So we're going to pause this. If you want to pause this for now and find two or three songs, praise and worship songs, and then come back and we're going to go on with the Brit Kadasha, the new covenant reading this for this week. And we are back. We're going to read 
from the Brit Kadashah, the New Covenant, Matthew chapter 5, verses 27 to 30. And in these verses, we can see Yeshua actually addressing the very same things that were addressed in the Torah section. Um, and it begins with saying in verse 27, you have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I tell you that everyone who looks upon a woman to lust after her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. And if your right eye causes you to stumble, gouge it out and throw it away, it is better for you that one part of your body should be destroyed than your whole body be thrown in Gehenna. Gehenna. And that is G-E-H-E-N-N-A, and that is actually meaning hell. And if your right hand causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away, it is better for you that one part of your body should be destroyed than your whole body go into Gehenna. But he was addressing the adultery issue here. Uh, he took it one step further by just saying, if you even love upon a woman um, with lust that is married, you're, you know, or you were married, you've already committed adultery in your heart without even doing the act uh, because it was in your heart. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, um, in looking at this, I'm going to actually do the whole chapter instead of just verses one through five, because I think it's really important um, to touch on the whole thing. And this section is entitled Removing the Hamats, which would be leaven or sin, from your house. It is actually reported that among you there is, a sex there is sexual immorality and such immorality as, as it is not even among the pagans that someone has his father's wife and you are puffed up, shouldn't you have mourned instead so that one who did this deed might be removed from among you? For even though I am absent in body, I am present in spirit. I have already passed judgment on the one who has done this thing as though I were present. When you are gathered together in the name of our Lord Yeshua, I am with you in spirit. With the power of our Lord Yeshua, you are to turn such a fellow over to Satan for the destruction of his fleshly nature, so that his spirit may be saved in, in the day of the Lord Yeshua. And this is addressing the Corinthians in Corinth, but because this was going on and um, they, this needed to be addressed. And it goes on to say, your boasting is no good. Don't you know that a little hummus leavens the whole batch of dough? Get rid of the old hamats, so you may be a new batch, just as you are unleavened for Messiah, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. To so get rid of the old, when you come to be redeemed, when you come for repentance, let the old go. Let the sin, the leaven, the sin go in order for the new batch to be free of that. Don't mix the two. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast, not with the old hamats, the hamats of malice and wickedness, but with unleavened bread, the matzah of sincerity and truth. I wrote to you in my letter not to mix together with sexually immoral people, not at all meaning the sexually immoral people of this world, or the greedy or swindlers or idolaters, for then you would have to exit the world. For now, I am writing to you not to mix together with anyone who is being called a brother if he is sexually immoral or greedy or an idolater or a slanderer or a drunkard or a swindler, not even to eat with such a fellow. For what business do I have judging outsiders? Don't you judge those who are inside? But those who are outside, God judges, put away the wicked fellow from among yourselves. And that is the end of the reading of the Barit Kadashah. Very interesting, huh? So once again, this is, you know, all dealing with morality and living morally and um, a lot. Of, and, and actually, the two passages from the Barit Kadashah show that both the Lord Yeshua and the apostles reaffirmed the teachings of the Torah regarding sexual immorality, adultery, and a lustful heart seriously endangering the soul and can lead one to eternal um, 
perdition. So it, it, it was a warning, too, from both Yeshua and the apostles. And, you know, the law wasn't changed. Yeshua did not come to change the law. Actually, he, he came to fulfill it, and he actually taught um, from the Torah. So, um, and actually enhanced uh, those teachings as well. So that is the end of the Brit Kadashah lesson for this week. May God bless the reading of his most holy word. And I'm going to end this section in prayer, and then I'm going to open to an altar call. Father God, thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your word in both the old and the new covenants in the Tanakh. And in the Brit Kadashah, we thank you so much for your Torah, your Torah of life to us. We thank you um, for every, every word that has been inspired in, in your Bible. For it is an instructional manual for us. So we can, we can see past uh, what happened and transpired in the past. And we can see your heart, Father God. We see what it is that you want for us as well and how you want your people to be holy, to be holy and righteous unto you and how you knew that, that, that we needed a savior and you sent your only begotten son and he gave his life. He sacrificed his own life. He became a curse for us so that we may be with you eternally. We thank you for everything. We praise you. We honor you. We worship you. We love you. In the mighty name of Yeshua, Jesus, amen and amen. When we speak of our Savior, our, our Lord and Savior, Yeshua, Hamashiach, and what he did do for us, he didn't need to do that. And that, there's no one that would actually do that. Um, it is so important to know that sacrifice that was made for us. The wages of sin are death, and we were born into sin. We could not save ourselves. And then there was beyond um, the Ten Commandments, or in, in the Messianic Jewish Family Bible, they're called the Ten Words. Um, there were 613 other mitzvah or commandments. And Adonai knew that we needed a savior because there, there was no way that anybody could be perfect because we were not. But Yeshua was perfect. He was sinless, blameless, spotless. And he did become the sacrificial lamb. Prior to that, there was a sacrificial system that dealt with sin. Um, so those offerings were made. Um, there was a sinless, blameless lamb that was slaughtered. It, for the for the covering of sin, but I never took it away. When Yeshua came and gave His life, He took away the sins of the world. It was a an agonizing death that He 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 did for us. So when anybody says there are many paths to heaven, that is a lie straight from the pit of hell. Um, Yeshua's death would be in vain if that was the case. And he did die for all of us, uh, past, present, and future, meaning us in the future. He saw us on the, on the cross as well, um, the people of his time and the people previous to his time. He died for all mankind. So no, there are not many paths to heaven. No, you can't get yourself there on good works. No, you can't tithe into the church to buy your way to heaven. No, your family cannot pay the church to get you out of hell if you've sinned and you've never accepted the Lord as your Savior. That doesn't happen. There's no such thing as purgatory. Once you die, once you take your last breath, you're going one direction. You're going to heaven or you're going to hell. Um, it's that simple. There's no in-between. There's no working your way out of purgatory so you can go to heaven. There's, there's nothing that happens like that once you die. You have a choice now. 
And God gives us free will. You can choose to accept or reject Yeshua, the only begotten Son. And if you're ready to say that prayer with me, we're going to do that in just one moment. Romans 3, verse 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 5, verse 8 says, But God commanded his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Yeshua died for us. And 1 John, verse 1 Chapter 1, verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So if you're ready to say that prayer, you can say that with me right now. Father God, I come to you, sinner, and I need a Savior. I know I can't get to heaven on my own. I know that you sent your Son to die on a cross, a horrific death for me, to cleanse me of all my sins, to redeem me with his precious blood. I believe. I believe he is the Son of God. I believe he's the Son of Man. I believe he is the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. He is the Messiah. And I accept his salvation. I accept him and I come and I ask for forgiveness. I thank you, Lord Yeshua, for being my Savior, for giving your life for me. I thank you for all that you've done. And I accept today the gift of salvation you were offering, the gift of eternal life with you and the Father. And I declare you, Lord of my life, from this day forward, to rule and reign in my heart forever. Please send your Holy Spirit to live inside of me, to guide me in all of your ways for the rest of my life. I believe through you and you alone, I am saved. I am healed by your stripes that you took. You took away the afflictions and the illnesses. I believe I'm healed. I believe I'm saved, delivered, born again, and I believe I'm set free from sins and the consequences of sin. I believe through you and you alone, I am now healthy of mind, body, and soul in Yeshua, Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. And if you said that prayer with me, welcome to the family of God. And we're going to come back with a very short, a shorter um part five um, to end um, Shabbat services. I'm going to talk about um, what happens after you become saved um, and we'll be back 